Hello everybody, welcome back. I have a lot of game systems behind me that are set up to be played on a moment's notice. So all the wiring is connected, including the controllers, the signal wiring to the TV, and the electrical wiring. A lot of people have said that this is a fire hazard. Today I'm doing a whole video on the electrical organization of this room. And I'll address those safety concerns as I go. And I'll be talking a lot about this device and others like it and how I use them to organize the electricity in this room. So it's going to be a very nerdy video, a very detailed video, and I hope you enjoy it. One of the drawbacks to having so many systems is that you can end up wasting a lot of power if you're not careful enough with how you do things. It's tricky to prevent it all because even when you're not playing your systems or even when you don't have them on, they can consume power. When I built this setup, I wanted to make sure when I left the room that there was zero power usage happening. When it comes to the modern systems, there's multiple modes that they can be in. You can have the system on, or you can have it in standby. When it's in standby mode, it still consumes power because it uses it to do things such as download updates. But even when it's not in standby mode and you turn your modern system completely off, it still consumes power as long as it's plugged into the wall because part of it has to stay on in case you want to hit the button on the controller to turn the system on. The only true way to not consume power is to not have it plugged into the wall at all. The older systems have a different problem. A lot of them had these power bricks, AC adapters. I don't have this connected to a system. I have one of these devices which measures electrical usage. Right now it says zero amps. But watch what happens when I plug that power brick into it. It's consuming power even though I don't even have the power brick plugged into a system. These power bricks also get warm even when they're not plugged into a system. So you might say, Kevin, well that's not that much power, why are you even worried about that? Well, I have a lot of systems, so when you add it all up, it could add a substantial amount to my electric bill. Plus, it's a safety concern too. I don't like all these different plugs and systems sapping power when I'm not in the room. What if one of my cats chews on a cord or something? Something bad can happen. To resolve my concerns, I ended up buying a bunch of these rectangular boxes that you see here at the top of my gaming setup. They have plugs in the back of them and they have switches on the front of them. So it's kind of like each system has its own light switch. As you may or may not know, if you have a lamp that's plugged into a wall, but the light switch that's on the wall is in the off position, that lamp is not going to consume any power at all. Nothing on the outlet associated with that light switch is going to be able to consume power at all because it's a physical break in the circuit. That's what these things provide, a physical break in the circuit for up to nine devices on each one. I get a lot of comments from people thinking that I have a high electricity bill. My electricity bill did not change after I built the setup because of everything I just mentioned. When I leave the room, all the electricity is off. And when I'm in the room, I'm only consuming electricity for whatever TV I'm using and whatever system I'm using. I do have LED lights on the setup, but I don't turn those on too often. And yes, when I'm making YouTube videos, I might have both TVs on, but that's not typically what's going on in the room. The most common name for these are PDUs, but they can also be called rack mount power supplies. Because you would normally install these on a rack, I kind of do have racks, but these things aren't screwed into it. I use four slightly different ones in the game room, and there's a fifth one that I no longer use. When I first started creating the game room, the one I bought was the PSS8, made by Technical Pro. It can power up to eight devices. Just like the other ones, it has a switch for every plug in the back. It goes back about six and a half inches, and it holds eight devices. It has its own power cord that's detachable. 
and all the ones you see today have a fuse built in. When I expanded my collection of systems, I noticed that they didn't sell these anymore. Instead, they had the PSS9, which is very similar except it can hold 9 switches. It's also smaller, it only goes back 4.5 inches. I continued to expand my setup over the years, and eventually, I noticed that they weren't selling those anymore. So, I ended up getting a PS9U, which was their newest model. It still holds 9 devices, but it's now black, and it has a USB charging port. In case you want to use this to charge something, it goes back about 4 inches and has a detachable cord. However, when I bought a couple more later on, the cord was no longer detachable, even though it was still called the PS9U. So they obviously keep tweaking their products. In the past, I have also used the Illuminator E107. This one's made by a different company, but it does hold 8, and it has a different color design, obviously. I had some problems with it, which I'll get into in a little bit. Most of these have rubber feet on the bottom. They are removable if someone needs to do that. Technical Pro and the Eliminator are not the only brands of these things on the internet. If you search enough, you'll find uh, a lot of different companies make them. I use a total of 12 of these devices in my gaming room. They are all powered by three different outlets. And you might scratch your head and say, oh, how do you do that? For one thing, they're kind of a long distance away from those outlets and the cords that come with them are not long enough to reach those outlets. So I use extension cords to make them reach. And when I buy extension cords, I make sure I get really big thick ones. Because if you're using multiple devices, you'll want to make sure it can handle it all. So how do I plug in 12 different things when I have three outlets with only six spots to plug things into? The answer is this Y splitter cord. It's like a little tiny extension cord that plugs into the wall and it splits in two, allowing you to power two different things. Once again, if you're going to go down this path, make sure you pick up a Y splitter that is very thick. There's some thin ones on the market that you want to avoid. Just pay a few more bucks to get the thicker one. In some cases, I had to use two of them in a row, like this, in order to get power to all 12 of my rack mounts. Once again, I'm only powering one TV and one game system, so having these many splits does not matter because I'm still only using as much power as a person that has a one system setup in their living room. Having a lot of wires plugged in does not increase the draw on the power. Now one of the problems you can have is when you have a power brick like this and you plug it into the back of the rack mount, it can block the little plugs around it. And it's also awkward how it sits flush on the back. It limits the way you can put these on the shelves. So what I end up using for my power bricks are these little tiny extension cords. And what you do is you just plug it in like this. This allows me to rest the power bricks off to the side. There's a few systems in my setup that I have to pull out onto the floor in order to play them because they have really short hardwired controller cords. For those, I need to have a lot of slack in the power cords. So I end up plugging those systems in through an extension cord and into the back of the rack mount power supply, if that makes sense. In a couple of spots in the setup, I stack one of these on top of the other, and I use Velcro to keep them attached together. Now these devices are not perfect. There are some reliability issues. I did not mention this before, but the buttons glow when you have them on, and that's very useful. When I'm about to leave the game room, I turn around and see if any of the power switches have been left on. It's an awesome feature, but they are very dim LED lights, and they can be very hard to see unless you turn off all the other lights in the room. Also, some of them are more dim than others. You can see one here that's dimmer, so there's some kind of quality issue going on. There's been some times where I turn on one of these switches and the light doesn't turn on at all. I wasn't able to recreate it for this video, but it does happen occasionally. What I end up doing is flicking it on and off again, and it usually comes back on at that point. On the Eliminator one, one of the buttons just fully broke. The button doesn't work anymore, and it doesn't flick on and off. It just kind of jiggles. That was one of the reasons I chose not to use that for my game room. 
but I have used it for other things around the house. I just can't plug anything into that button. But let me address a major issue. There's a YouTuber named Scott Dot Dot, and he got the model PS9U. He showed how it could be overloaded. He pretty much said that the cord that you use to power the unit is too thin. And he said the fuse is not the right kind of fuse for that device. What he proceeded to do in the video is plug in a space heater and two halogen lights into the rack mount and he ran it for a very long time and uh, he had the cover off and he was yanking at the wires and this happened. Ah, there we go. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, all I did was jiggle that wire. That, I didn't mess with this at all. That's the way I found it. And that sort of horrible loose. I doubt anyone's going to be plugging their space heaters into these units, but he does point out that these things can overheat and lead to some defects. Bear that in mind if you end up purchasing one of these of your own. Do not overload it. Just play one system and power one TV with it, but don't go beyond that. Because of the concerns in his video, I do not recommend using these to plug in computer devices like servers and stuff like that. That's what some people use PSUs for. Other people use them to run DJ equipment, and I'm not sure how much power those use. But I have been using these things for over 10 years now, and I've never smelt anything electrical or felt any get hot or anything like that. You know how detailed I am about things, and I've monitored them over long periods of time, and nothing bad has ever happened. I'll talk about one more drawback to having these and that is they get dusty. The black surfaces on some of these really show a lot of it. These things are very flat so they're easy to dust. Every two months I dust them and it only takes me a few minutes. It's not that big of a deal but I thought I would mention it because I know some of you can't stand dust at all. I will say that I have a few things that aren't systems powered by these things. One I have marked as auxiliary and that just powers a plug that's at the bottom of the setup. Sometimes I use that to run a laptop in order to capture footage, but I use it for lights and other things as well. I also have charging devices on some of the switches because a lot of the modern systems have charging devices that need to be utilized. Let me know in the comments if you have any additional knowledge to impart on the video or if you have any questions about anything I said today. If you would like to see a general tour of the room, I've done that and I'll put the link on the screen in front of you right there. I also have a Patreon for $1 a month. You can get early access to all these videos and you'll also get to see bonus behind the scenes videos. May your games make you happy and smart and may people respect you for playing them. So long everybody.